All right, oh, Nate, give us the epic conclusion. Beautiful, give a beautiful, wonderful, sad day. The day is. Um. Yeah. So this is the conclusion of the twelve issue maxi series. Um, it was uh, it was it was nice. Honest, it was not quite as strong as I was hoping it to be, but it was still it was still good. Um, so right at the end of the previous book, um, we get um, Mole Utep or whatever. You know, all the characters' names are just ridiculous. In this, Did you but, just summon a demon out of hell? What did you just say? Mole Utep. <laughs> um, he basically uh, consumes. Uh, the son of uh, the bastard son of the king. Remember a few issues ago, he gets his arm cut off, and then those little god fairies create an arm hammer for him. Yep. I don't know if you remember, that. Uh, he gets consumed um, by the demon god, and basically the demon god gets personified, gets a human body, um, and that's how that issue ended. We're like, well, fuck, that's exactly what we've been trying to not do this entire time. That's the <laughs> one thing we've been trying to avoid. Um, so this issue starts out with with uh, demon god basically just swatting everyone like gnats really quickly. Hmm. Uh, the uh, queen gets knocked off of her beast pretty quickly. He's trying to shoot arrows, and he's like, "Ha, no, no way." Um, the uh, woman who's like uh, was built to be the weapon that carried the magic that could defeat him, uh, he essentially just like throws a little plant spear booger gross thing like through her and she's like on the ground bleeding. um everyone's like well shit now what are we gonna do um and we basically get two things happening at once the little rock guy um you know i can't remember his name golem it's crazy golem yes uh he runs over to the weapon girl who's bleeding out and is like uh, you, you're gonna have to get up because you're gonna have to kill this guy. And she's like fucking bleeding everywhere. And he's like, nope, it's not gonna happen. And he basically is like, oh, well, don't you have faith in your God? And his eye starts shining and she starts realizing, oh, wait, you're not just a random rock dude who just happened to be in the right place at the right time. You're the personification of the, the good God, essentially. And there's a little bit of flashback panels where all these weird characters that just like were seem to be at the right place at the right time offering the right thing uh, were there. And they always say your grace. So at one point, they ought, this guy, this old gross woman offers food and it's like a, a trust kit for your pup, your grace. And then another guy mocks and yells at him, which makes this guy leave and go on the, on the journey. It basically turns out he is the good god that has been helping these people get to where they need to be the entire time the entire time <clears throat> and so uh the uh older guy that has been living in these mountains controls that last uh blue fairy he decides i've got one more trick up my sleeve and he summons that blue fairy and it completely consumes his body and he is like glowing blue and has like, like it looks like his body is almost made out of waves and he jumps like the god is like 30 feet in the air like it's a massive thing he like jumps and punches inside of him and rips the one-armed bastard son out of him and throws him on the ground <laughs> so he didn't die like we thought he did um and the god gets super mad and basically snaps his fingers and the guy, uh, the older guy with the, the blue body shatters into a million pieces. Like, this character that we were like, yeah, he's definitely going to be the one to save him. Nope. Now he's... His, he literally snaps his fingers and it's just a skeleton going, ah! And his <laughs> bones are fucking flying everywhere. Um, but, because that happened... The blue fairies are able to leave him. They go to the woman that's bleeding on the ground, pick her up, and her combined with the bastard son who has his axe back, uh, combined with the queen who is now back on her steed, they all mount one last hurrah, create this giant orb of blue god magic and shoot it at him and kill him. And so yay, 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 we've won the day. Um, and then... 
the, that part of the book is super epic. Art is insanely immaculate, just like what you'd expect from this book. Absolutely over the top. Like, I cannot fathom how he must like Federici must have uh, drawn this book months and months in advance because I can't possibly imagine how he did it on a month to month basis. Anyway, the second half of the book is really just like a uh, ex, you know, like a what's the word I'm looking for, like a montage of kind of wrapping things up. Get a montage. Yeah. So we get a we get a cut back and forth like it has been going on this whole time in this book of seeing the old band and kind of what they did when they defeated the god the first time, and then what this what this group does now and what they do differently. Um, the elven guy um, is taken back to his home so he can get a proper burial, uh, and then I think that is it is implied that the one armed. Uh, King, King's bastard essentially stays there to help those people, which is you know like that means that he's grown because he hated the elven people at first. Uh, the queen goes back home and becomes a more righteous queen. Uh, the Dwaro people are able to come out of hiding in the mountains for where they've been hiding for fifty years. You know, it's basically just like a wrap up of oh everything seems like it's going to be great and fine and dandy. Um, and then just like his. Uh, just like we always get in these book, we get a nice like actual text page. Um, essentially wraps up the early reign of Queen Scyanth, uh, and like what happens after that, and it shows how she kind of solidifies power. But then it starts hinting at a ton of other things that could go wrong, um, setting up for a possible uh, sequel or further books. Um, and you're hoping for that. Well, at the end, uh, there's also an afterword by Philip Kennedy Johnson that says, um, or like what it basically says, um, in the earliest weeks of developing The Last God, as we set out to make it feel as authentic as we could, we realized that we were already outgrowing the confines of our 12-issue limit. Um, so the, all of this is to say the story's not finished and it may never be. A Cain and Nun is home to more races and tribes than we've ever been able to show you. And here are some of the stories that, you know, we'd like to tell. So it seems like, uh, I don't know. It seems like he feels that he's going to be able to continue the story. Now, we know that this is a uh, DC Black Label, which is absolutely dead. So it seems highly unlikely that... Um, will continue as a DC imprint. What I think would be amazing is if uh, somehow Johnson was able to get the rights to this and uh, carry it to a creator-owned publisher, go over to Image or Boom or Dark Horse, you know, and be able to mm -hmm. pitch it and say, look, we had great sales. This is what we did. This is what I'm going to do. And hopefully he can continue it. I'm sure he will. I think, I don't know. I mean, who knows? DC is in such a is in such shambles i to me the question for you is do you eat edibles when you read this book do what do you consume edibles when you read this book no i don't have edibles i wish i did <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know just like no, when you were describing it when you were describing it, I was like, dude, did I just eat a gummy? Like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> I mean, not in a bad way. I'm just saying, like, fuck, dude. Like, that's some epic shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... I mean... To me, this... So this was one of the very first comics that I picked up when I started getting into comics. Mm -hmm. I actually went to... What's the what's the store that's off of South Hewland? Uh, down by Half Price, uh, Wild West. Uh, Wild West. It's like Wild West on yeah on Healing. So I was I was down there and I was like, you know, how can I help you? I was like, I don't know. I kind of feel like getting a comic. Uh, he, I went there because I got the second issue of Rise of Kylo Ren, which is the very first comic that I actually bought off a shelf from a comic book store. Mm -hmm. And the, the first issue of Last God had had just come out like two weeks before. He was like, oh, man, he'd say, how do you feel about, like, monsters and, like, Dungeons and Dragons and, like, uh, uh, Frank Franzetta, who's a, who's an artist who does similar stuff like this. He's like, how do you feel about all that? And I was like, 
that sounds perfect. What is that? So he gave me this book. He was like, here's this. And if you like it, the next issue comes out next week and come get it too. And so this was technically the second book I ever picked up, like out off a shelf from a comic book store. Um, it has a little bit of an extra special uh, place for me. Um, but if they ever come out with like a oversized hardcover collection of this, like that is a day one pre-order for me, no doubt. That's what I was about to say is like, because I've only read the first issue and I want to get into it. I just like, I would love to just consume it in one medium. Uh, the minute this mm-hmm. book, like you said, like comes in an oversized treasury hardcover edition, I'll buy it and buy it. And I'll enter it be worth it too with all of the extra um prose mm-hmm. pages and maps and uh <laughs> i don't know if uh philip kennedy johnson is like a musician as well but there's also of the 12 issues i think there's six or seven songs in each one as well nice. like actual like has musical notes and like how how to sing it and all that stuff it's crazy. i mean based off of the artwork and the covers alone i would i would buy this book so i have no doubt the dc art- DC will release a hardcover or some kind of omnibus or whatever. Um, mm. I would totally buy it. Cause like every time you talk about it, I'm like, fuck, I should have got into this book. Um, so yeah. I'd, and I was really intrigued in the first issue. So yeah, if, if they do it, which they will, I will totally buy that. Well, cool. So that is last goods book one, chapter 12, cross your fingers. Hopefully either DC decides to, continue the story or they let um kennedy uh take the rights to somewhere else i mean dude if this book went to boom holy shit you know what i mean 